Hey guys, how are you going? Um, today I just want to run through this template that I've um, built and just want to give away to anyone who thinks they might like to try it out or you know use it as a backbone, like the starting point for their own template, which I encourage everybody to do. Um, yeah, templates, uh, once you kind of realize how important it is to make sure there's nothing in the way of your creative process. Templates are a must, in my opinion. Anyway, guys, we'll get straight into it. Um, all right, so we've got the side chain channel here at the top. It's turned off. It's pumping out white noise. Um, and all of these other group buses um, are looking at the side chain channel. So the way I use this is it's quite a common technique. You might have seen it on other tutorials. Um, yeah, basically just make a new MIDI clip. And, you know, you just put in very small, make sure they're small. I mean, like, it's up to you. You get to, I mean, like, put it like that size for, for starters, maybe. And then, um, and then I usually grab them all. and um, shrink them to size because quite literally the um, size of these notes is going to be the amount of time that um, the signal is ducked on all your sidechain compressors. So, I mean, for me, I just usually like to have a very small one that just um, ducks everything out of the way of a transient. Just let the transient punch through and then everything comes back so it's not too noticeable. And you can always change the release time on the individual compressors, um, you know, to get some variation between your bass and your instrument bus, for example. Anyway, uh, moving right along. So that one can stay off, guys. You don't need to have that on. Um, the signals just kind of feed through regardless. So it's, yeah, it's good. Um, Sub-channel. Uh, this method I've used before but kind of slink definitely solidified it for me so check his tutorials out they're amazing um, they'll teach you lots and lots of great stuff so anyway this is kind of um, this is a sub channel it's got my sub set up I use this sub for everything um, it's yeah try it out it, it sounds good on um, you know even small systems and stuff so it's pretty much good to go um, I've got a multiband dynamics plug-in here um, that's soloing just the low frequencies and then on every other channel, say like our bass or whatever, the multiband dynamics is actually soloing uh, the mids and highs. So if you just, if you turn that higher channel off then you'll see, see this rectangle here, you're basically just soloing everything above 120 hertz. So that is um, it's a really useful method of um, making sure your sub is just really solidified in the mix. It just punches through. There's no, um, you know, you can go wild on your bass, resampling and modulation and blah, 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 blah. But all these bass channels here, um, so, you know, just making your audio track and whatever if you're doing some resampling. Um, and you don't have to worry about any multiband stuff here. Um, it will just send through to the bus and then the bus will take out um, everything below 120. So try it out guys, it's a good method, um, might seem weird at first but if you make a solid sub, and then see the great thing is right, like um, just quickly record some nonsense. Wow. Yeah, so then just copy paste right, into your sub. We're getting signal here. I've got this. My speaker's turned down so I can't hear myself too loudly. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's coming through. Oh, okay, the octave's wrong. Right, so when the octave's wrong, so say. Yeah, that's what's happening. Retin in C4, Jesus Christ. Drop that down. 
Alright, let's see. Yeah, it's getting... Yeah, that'll do for, for this example anyway. Um, yeah, so copy-paste straight into your sub-channel and you shouldn't have to worry about it then. Yeah, okay, so now our sub's coming through. Um, everything under 120, right? Um, now, you're going to see this little utilities default thing that I've built on every track that we go through here. May as well explain that now. Um, by default, it's off. I'll just show you like what happens when you make a... Um, oh, I've got one up here so you guys can save um, these if you want, if you like the way I've done it. So, you know, when I make a new audio channel, it gives me exactly this. Um, so, and then my MIDI channel looks like this, just with a sampler there, just really quick for resampling. And um, you would have noticed this little module thing everywhere. And essentially, it's turned off by default, so it's not true on any CPU. And yeah, fab filter, like every pretty much every track is going to need some EQ work, right? So if your computer can handle it, um, use a better EQ. But if not, I also have a template set up um, that will be in the description that has no third-party plugins. So I've just rebuilt this just with all Ableton stuff um, and even the instruments and stuff. So like, you know, I think there's a shitty operator patch instead of Serum and, you know, so on and so forth. So... If you're having troubles or you don't have some of the software I've got and it's not working for you, just open the other one instead and then you get you can just swap it out with, you know instruments and effects and stuff that you like. So that's what I really encourage you to do is just tailor it to your own needs so you it's exactly what you need. Right? Um Yep, so that's my default. To to save these channels, uh to because when you open this up, you know, if you make a new audio track like so you're not going to get that. You're going to get whatever your default is, which might be nothing. I think that's the Ableton standard. It definitely is. So all you have to do is right-click and save default audio track. And it'll say, do you want to overwrite? Yes. Okay, and the same for the MIDI. All right, so just right-click and save as default. Um, so that's what they're there for, if you guys want. But I encourage you, before you save this template as, a, um, as your default live set, um, you might want to delete these out of there, you know, just keep it clean, I don't know. I, they're just there so you guys can, yeah, use them if you want. Um, Alright, what do we got here? Instruments, yeah, so there's compressor, like everything's looking at this sidechain channel like I was telling you, so just tweak the attack and release to suit your needs. Um, again, we've got um, the EQ there when we need it, the spectrum there when we need it, and a limiter there when we need it. So you just turn on that module and you, everything's activated. Um, so I guess in the meat channel, since there's some stuff there, you just turn that on. Instant spectrum, you know, it's just just saves little bits of time, guys. Like, you can just if you're doing some EQ work on another channel, quickly just bounce back to a conflicting channel, turn that on for a sec, have a look. You're like, all right, yeah, it's chilling around the, you know, this area, whatever. Cool, moving right along. Um, I made a little sax hub there just because I use saxophones and horns quite a bit. Um, so these two channels here are actually sending into this and then the sax hub sends to the instruments bus. So you guys can tailor that to your own needs. You know, maybe you like using guitar heaps or I don't know. Any, it's just a handy little bus setup. So you can just duplicate this sax channel and rename it if you want and it should all be good to go. Um, yep, sending into there, all very standard. Uh, that sax has a reverb and a and contact already preloaded. There you go. Just little things, see? Like instant shit, you don't have to set up anything. Miscellaneous is just, uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. Um, riser. Yeah, I try not to add too many things, guys, because, like, you don't want to have like a cookie cutter template where you just go and you know, color in the boxes or whatever and fucking print out the same song every time. So, you know, and it really only takes two seconds to make, like, make a new channel. So it is, I've tried to keep it as minimal as possible. 
um, drums. Um, you should probably, I should probably too, put your favorite drum bus compressor in this one before you save it as a default template. Um, if if that's what you like doing. <laughs> uh, what do we got? Kick, simple snare. Yep. Brakes hub. Yeah. So. Um, basically any percussion loops or breaks or whatever I drop on these channels and it sends to the breaks hub first cut the lows out of them, compress them a bit whatever whatever and then the master I've got this little work timer from Tom Gossam that's pretty handy a little bit buggy <laughs> um, there might be an update I haven't checked but when it's working properly yeah, it tells you like total time and the current session so um all right and then on the master channel um i've got ozone max bass from waves and then the old faithful here so yeah just suit it to your own needs and then lastly once you're all done um all we have to do is click on file and folder and then save current set as default Okay, but what's going to happen is, um, like, it's going to save absolutely everything. Even that cursor position right here, um, you know, like, if you've got a track armed. So, like, what I like to do is um, I've deleted it out of this template because I'm uploading it for you guys. But um, on the one I actually use, my actual template, the only real change is that I have... Um, this bad boy yeah just because I, I have a push um, and I like to be able to just open up Ableton and it opens up this default set and it's literally got this amazing fucking pack that Mad Zach made absolute legend sound design like a king um, here yeah, so like you know 64, 64 pad lab and that's armed and ready to go. So that's that's m what my default looks like. I have that. So I can just open up Ableton and just start jamming on my push. Um, do that sort of stuff for like anything that you like to use. Like, um, I don't know, your, your keyboard or whatever. Put, put like a contact instrument with your favorite synth or instrument or whatever. And have it armed and save that as default. And yeah, just so that you can just like wake up in the middle of the night with an idea and just open up Ableton with like sleepy little eyes and start playing and quick click record and then wake up in the morning and sort it out that's my method anyway well, my <laughs> the theory behind it um, anyway guys that is all from me um, I hope you got something out of this, this tutorial and um, yeah let me know if there's anything else you'd like to learn um, or yeah any other ideas for stuff questions um, there's quite a few little things that I've thought of, you know, kind of recently that would be good for a tutorial. I haven't seen, um, any tutorials on some of the things I've worked out. So yeah, stay tuned and, um, yeah, peace. Catch you later. Hey guys. Um, yeah. So just when I was preparing this video, I just realized that I forgot something. Uh, it's not crucial, but you might be wondering what it was. See on these default channels, and like it's everywhere. There's this J G J P green switch. So what that is is um, uh, I'll show you. They do the same thing on audio and MIDI, but there's you use a different one. So this is the MIDI one, right? And what happens is, um, if I turn this channel off, see how my sample is actually turned off, and that'll do that for every instrument on a MIDI channel. So say yeah, say you've got a big heavy like contact instant of instance of contact, and um, you turn that channel off. By default, live kind of keeps them on, like, and they're still there in the background chewing up all this info. Especially if there's MIDI notes that are playing through, like, um, yeah. So this, yeah, it's really good. It goes all the way, like, it's apparently even like an energy saver. <laughs> so your computer's not drawing so much current. So pretty cool saves on CPU obviously so yeah just you know once you've got your tracks turned off um, it's it's essentially just 
sitting there not not taking up any load so that's all i wanted to tell you about um just leave it there unless you want to delete it for some reason but i just have it there and i don't even worry about it that's pretty much why i forgot to tell you guys <laughs> anyway catch you later guys peace